So next up for lectures on Lacan, as you probably already know, is seminar 16. We're jumping from 14 to 16. And not surprisingly, some folks have been looking into seminar 16, particularly the first few pages, and have written to me asking basically what the fuck. These are crazy pages. Um, it's tough to make sense of them. Um, what's the story here? Um, so I think it's worth just taking a second before the series even begins and looking at these first few pages. Um, I'm looking here potentially as a start on page four and then working back. It's really the first four to six pages before Lacan introduces Marx that he's laying out some things for us to consider. And it's not irrelevant that the start here is with structuralism. Here's what Lacan tells us, though, on page four. Do not be frightened. These are opening remarks, reminders of certainties, not truth. And I would like, before introducing today the schemas from which I intend to start, so we're even before the start of this seminar, to mark that if something here and now ought to already be in the palm of your hand, it is what I took the care to write earlier on the board about the essence of theory. The essence of psychoanalytic theory is the function of discourse, and very precisely because of something that may appear new to you, or at least paradoxical, that I am saying that it is without words. It is a matter of the essence of the theory because it is what is at stake. So if we take that as a starting point and then look back at the epigraph for the entire seminar, we see where Lacan has written on the board, the essence of psychoanalytic theory is a discourse without words. Now, if you reviewed our materials on seminar 14, you know exactly what he means by discourse. Uh, but it's worth taking a second to work on this together now so that you have a sense of what he's doing with the very first operative word in this epigraph, discourse. What the hell does he mean by discourse? Now, it's commonly known that seminar 16 marks this discursive turn in Lacan's thought, which is going to culminate in seminar 17 with the four discourses. Um, here, it's, it's worth focusing on what he means by discourse in this kind of preliminary stage. And remember, as Lacan puts it, we are at the beginning of the beginning, before the beginning, before he's even started the seminar, he has these opening remarks. Now, if you've read Lacan, you know that at the beginning and the end of his remarks is usually where most of the good stuff is. He usually tells you what's going on right up front, albeit in a completely difficult, challenging, um, I am a poem sort of way. So let's look for a second at this notion of discourse. You see the epigraph, it's on page one of the unpublished English translation that we're working with here of seminar 16, a discourse without words. And then he immediately jumps from there into structuralism. And some publicist who lumps some people together, encompassing them in a discourse known as structuralism. Lacan then goes on famously to play with the idea that this publicist, this work of publicity, is also like putting set people together in a dustbin, containing them in a dustbin. And Lacan jokes that, you know, I've been around the block a few times, it's no big deal, top of page two. Um, I know what is involved in living with household refuse. So here what you have is a discourse, structuralism, that Lacan is toying with as a container, not unlike a wastebasket or a dustbin, that in this case contains refuse. And this is our first and foremost entry into what Lacan means by discourse. At this point, discourse is closely connected to language. It's closely connected to the big other. It's closely connected to the symbolic. What we learned in seminar 14 is that the big other does not exist. And what Lacan means when he says that is that it doesn't exist as whole, as total, as all-encompassing. There's always something missing from the big other. This is the reason why Lacan will say the big other doesn't exist, there is no meta-language, and various other bumper stickers. It's a set theoretical argument that he's making, and it's really quite simple. Containers are not among the things they contain. So there's a wastebasket right here, sitting next to my desk. 
the waste basket itself is not among the refuse that is inside it. The container is not among the things it contains. And here you can see why Lacan in this period is fascinated with Russell's paradox, the set of all sets that do not contain themselves. And Lacan says that's not a paradox at all. Logically, it makes sense. You can just think right through that one. There's nothing paradoxical about that. Unless you're operating in the wheelhouse of philosophy, symbolic logic, then it suddenly is extremely problematic. Um, but here the first thing to note is, when Lacan says discourse, he means container. And his theory of the container, whether it's the big other, the symbolic language, or a discourse, is that it's always missing something. The other is always barred for this reason. Something is missing from it. And in the famous bumper sticker that we've all heard before, what's missing from the big other is a big other for itself. There is no other of the other. Now, I'm playing with this idea, obviously, because of the title of this seminar, From an Other to the Other. <clears throat> but also just kind of riffing on this so that you'll have some of our notes from Seminar 14 top of mind here about what Lacan is doing with language and the lack of a meta-language. <clears throat> Immediately after this understanding of structuralism as a discourse, as a waste basket full of refuse, which is not unimportant here, he shifts from this basket to philosophy, as if to say that structuralism, whatever this means, is not philosophy. If by this word, philosophy, he says on page two, there is designated a vision of the world. Now, already we are getting at what Lacan understands in this period to be the fundamental fantasy. The fundamental fantasy is that the other does in fact exist as whole, as totalizing. The fundamental fantasy is that wholeness is achievable. Completion can be rendered. That the big other, in other words, exists. And he says this is part of what philosophy gets into. If by this word there is designated a vision of the world, some outside perspective that would be able to take the entire world into itself and fully contain, totalizing as such, the world. Uh, Lacan doesn't want to be associated with that shit. He thinks that that is the fundamental fantasy of philosophy, which we're going to come to in a second, as to how this materializes around thought, all in the first four pages of what is the preliminary remarks on Seminar 16 that Lacan offers. Immediately on two after this, he dips into castration and says that this is the constitutive truth that psychoanalysis brings to the field here, this notion of castration. <clears throat> I don't think we need to spend a bunch of time on this. You can find this material discussed in other lectures in our series. Almost in every single one of them, we've got a section on castration. The things to note here are, in fact, the issue of no union of man and woman. Now, you've heard this phrase bandied about as well. The no union part is important. Prior to this, just a couple years before, Lacan is saying there is no universe of discourse. I've posted about this before on our Substack um, and also on Instagram. What it means by that is that there is no totalized, completely contained, coherent sense of discourse. And that's partly what he's working on here. There's always a disjunction. Something is constantly dropping out of that process. And Lacan wants to access that by way of castration. He wants to put that in terms of man and woman, which is just fine. We can come to that um, in future series, as I expect we will when we get to 19 and 20 especially. Um, right now, what matters is the no union part. Because as you move down on page two, don't get caught up in the bullet points. Don't get caught up in the man and woman business. Focus on the no union. Because then at the bottom of page two, we get an equivalence of kinds. No harmony. And then at the top of page three, we get this hooked back into the discourse of philosophy. Philosophy is always trying to harmonize thinking with itself. 
And what Lacan is here saying is that there is no union, there is no harmony, and this process is destined to fail.